Um, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to uh, what I guess I'm calling Magic 102 and what I hope is actually a series of little lectures and things that I might end up doing over time, but for now, we're trying to finish up my, my initial uh, introduction to the fundamentals okay. class. So uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, try to recap a little bit of what we covered the last time. Uh, I know we have some new faces here in the crowd today, uh, as well as maybe try to re-articulate some of the concepts that I had already gone over to think about them in a new way, uh, and then we can get going with the, the rest of uh, what, what we're up to today, which is, um, okay, so uh, for those who were here or didn't see my, uh, my last lecture online, uh, what we are doing is, uh, this is my uh, introduction to the fundamentals of magic, uh, which would be in, in uh, essentially the, the concepts that you can apply to your life uh, so that you can um, basically affect magical change um, in your life. Um, and uh, we have a lot of um, tools that we can use uh, conceptually uh, to help articulate some of these ideas. And so that's basically, uh, the, the main focus is uh, on this um, diagram that we're working on here that we started last time, which is, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is the uh, Kabbalistic Tree of Life, um, which uh, the, the, the really short way to say it is it is a, a hyper-sigil map of the universe. Uh, that we use uh, to help us understand um, magical principles and the interplay of uh, energies. Um, so what we're going to be doing is articulating the uh, rest of the Sephiroth, which is what you call these uh, circles. They are sort of uh, resting places of energy, or you can think about them as uh, the next unfolding of God's consciousness as we go from the singularity of the One to uh, the messy 3D world that we're in and everything in between. Um, so, uh, to get started, um, I, one of the things that I think may help to, because uh, when we started last time, we were trying to talk about uh, Ein Sof Or and the, uh, the veils of negative re existence. When we were thinking about ourselves uh, in the, on the arrow of time, in, in the cause and effect world of past, present, future, um, we are uh, we have a, we have a beginning and an end, uh, but the universe in theory is beyond those concepts of beginning and ending, and that's why we try to use these kind of concepts of the veils of negative existence to talk about God before we talk about the universe. Um, and so we use Ein, which is nothing, Ein Sof, which is um, like boundless, and then Ein Sof Or, which is boundless light. Uh, so if Ein is like nothing, like nothing, nothing, Ein Sof would be like all of God, all, all of creation, all of everything that is, and then Ein Sof Or is sort of the, uh, the raw uh, astral life, or even, we might even want to call it astral at this point, just the, the light, uh, the, um, the libido, uh, uh, the, the energy of life and creation, um, and so you could also think about these where we're, drawing, we're drawing them as nested circles. You can imagine those nested circles actually being around even the tree. Okay, so a, an easy way to, I don't know if this is easy, but a way that I use to try to articulate, all right, so you have to think about polarity, and we were talking about polarity before, but you think about polarity in like two ways, right? Because there's like two different, like two, I guess, ways to think about magnets, right? You've got, you know, your positive and your negative pole, and then you have versions where it's like positive on the edge, or positive in the middle and the negative on the edge, right? So you'd also think, what if you turn that pole sideways and you were looking down at it, or you turn this pole upways and you were looking at it that way? There's different ways. So while we think about the expansion of polarities in this way, we can think about the nested universes in this way, while it's still the same thing. That makes sense? Right, it's still, like, it's still the, because, sorry, uh, we, were, we were talking about the last time, the ultimate dynamic, right? Where actually we even say, you know, everything is a metaphor for sex. But what is sex a metaphor for, right? And that was that ultimate dynamic of that which penetrates, which is that which is penetrated, right? In the same way, 
the nested universes of Ein Sof, or get us to Keter, which then we could even think, as opposed to this polarity, we could even think of Chokmah unfolding from Keter, and then Binah unfolding from Chokmah, and so on. So there's two different ways, like while this is a, a, the, the paths and the trees and the Sephiroth are a great way to talk about the expansion, we talked about the lightning bolt of creation, this is another way of thinking about it, that they're all just kind of like Russian dolls, like nested within one another, and everything is the aggregate of what came before it. Remember we were talking about that before? We're going one, two, three, four, five, and so on, where three has two and one in it, right? Okay, so now I feel like I'm getting off track. I wanna make sure what else we cover. All right, so the other thing that I wanna make sure that end up in this video are some of the things that kind of got cut out were my, my poor technical skills. So, um, we were talking about the concept of um, doves and serpents that didn't make it. Um, we were talking about the dynamic that uh, serpents rise and doves descend. So when we're talking about how energy moves uh, up and down the tree of life, serpents rise, and so maybe you've even seen the tree of life sometimes depicted with like a serpent wrapping its way up through it. That's kind of what, is, what it's implying, is moving back up. So another way to think about that is when we talk about... Um, like kundalini yoga, and we talk about the kundalini serpent that is coiled, the base of the spine, that rises up the spine, like the caduceus, until it reaches the crown, which is orgasm, right, or whatever. Um, in the same way that the dove descends in that Holy Spirit kind of way, in the receiving kind of way. So either way, you're smashing these poles together this way as well, when you're trying to reach the divine. Make sense? Okay, cool. So basically, I just wanted to touch on that doves, because you'll hear that a lot. Serpents rise and doves descend, and that's kind of what that means, going up or going down. Um, now, another thing we were talking about that I think got cut out, where we were talking about love being the force that resolves paradox and unites polarities to become the thing which is higher than you guys are with me, right? Okay, so another way to kind of um, talk about that is like, well, first of all, why, right? Why divide it in the first place? That's painful. Division is painful, right? Because it's either together and up or out and down, right? Almost like a pyramid. We think of this as a pyramid as well. Um, so uh, we have um, in the Book of the Law, Crowley's Book of the Law, uh, is a, a really wonderful way of articulating this, which is, um, says, I am divided for love's sake, for the chance of union. That's the point of division, is to reunite. We can't divide, or we can't reunite without first being divided, and we can't have that joy of division. That's what you lack in the singularity, right? Is the other. Seeing that now? Okay, cool. So, um, and the other thing that we were touching on when we were talking about um, resolving those paradoxes, right? Um, we were talking about good and evil and the dynamic of good and evil, light and dark. And, you know, um, in the sense of, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe a moral, moral point of view. Uh, another fun thelemic thing we can use is the idea of, um, oh, I'm sorry, no, I want to check my notes. Um, yeah, okay, so the idea, I think we did touch on this, but it got caught, uh, is the idea of um, anything that is done out of love is above good and evil, above those polarities of light and dark. So the idea, like where that may help you resolve um, some of those conundrums you might have, like where it's like, oh, uh, is it okay to steal food to feed a starving child? Right? Okay, yes. Right? That's a tough one, right? Is it right? Which one's right? But if it's done out of love, it's above good and evil. I'm not saying that there aren't consequences or karma consequences. The feeding starving child, I'm not saying you can't go to jail for it, and that's not right. But was it morally? Was it above good and evil? If it's done out of love, we would say yes, because that's what unites those paradoxes. Seeing that? Okay, cool. So um, the other thing we were talking about that I think may have gotten uh, a little brushed away, we were talking about the ego, right? Um, right. We were talking about the, the ego being um, that uh, the mask that you wear to participate in your environment, which may or may not be you, uh, and the idea that really one of the things that we can think about as we go up the tree of life 
And so what we're doing is we're shedding ego. We're shedding veils of ego. We're shedding our Sephiroth as we go up until we get to the abyss. Where above the abyss is the supernals, the act, as opposed to the actual is the ideal, right? The idea that um, you're, you can't exist above the abyss because there isn't you, you're not there. That would have to be shed to get there, right? And then you suddenly realize what you are and poof, because you were God the whole time, right? 